Now at the end of video one, the bed had been paint stripped, the feet had been scraped in, the main part of the bed had been scraped flat, and the front of the V-way. So today to continue I need to finish scraping in the, the rear of the V-way. I'm sure none of you guys can can relate to this, but I'm a bit of a terror at starting starting projects with great enthusiasm and then working on them for a bit and then starting another project and working enthusiastically on that for a bit and ending up with a huge number of half finished projects. This YouTube video thing is actually kind of cool. I guess it's sort of making a public commitment to something which provides a bit more, a bit of motivation to, uh, to actually go ahead and finish a job rather than just keep starting new ones. I was just watching Look Creation's uh, awesome series on, on restoring the Holbrook. Yeah, it kind of puts this project in a, in a different light. Huh? This is really is a, a mini project. When I consider how much work it must be to scrape in the whole bed, the bed of, a, of a whole industrial lathe like the, uh, the Holbrook. That's an imp impressive project. You really should look at it. One of these days I'm going to have to get one of those sets of precision ground stones that everyone raves about. After this pass, I need to resharpen the cutting blade, the scraper blade. By the way, if you're interested, you might want to check out my video on the uh, the Coborn scraper. This is probably not the ideal straight edge for, for this. You know, with all the all the mass, all the mass out on the fat end, it's not that easy to hold it in contact nicely. Well, it's starting to come in. 
I'm getting a reasonable coverage all through here. Maybe a, there's a bit of a low spot on the very end. Uh, there's a bit of a low spot here through the middle. And maybe a little bit down, down this end. But... Okay, it's now starting to look really quite nice and even. Uh, I might just do a little bit more, improve it some more, but it's getting close to being finished now. Well, I now have quite even contact right along the whole bed, so I'm going to leave that as a leave that as it is. I think that's now good enough. So next up, I need to measure the thickness of the back um, guideway, and then scrape in this this underside, which the saddle gets uh, gets clamped to. I still need to improve the gutter at the back, so I'll use the uh, Proxon tool. So let's measure the thickness, shall we? Here's my zero. Plus 37. These values are microns, so thousandth of a millimeter. Okay, this is. This way tapers badly from the edge by the bed out to the out to the outer edge. Like if I look here, I've got 42 out to 103 when I go right into the bed. So just marking up across here to see where I'm taking off metal. Just trying to remove that that step from the back of the way. I've now switched, now switched to a file with a smooth edge. So I'm still taking off a line across the back, so I think it's still high in that point, but <coughs> time to take another measurement. Let's measure that rear way. Plus eight. Now these measurements are in microns, so once I've started scraping properly, I'll start getting them close to the to a constant value. Thirteen. I hope you can see these numbers well. I started again, just check my measurements, they seem quite consistent. 
So with a zero at the, at the tailstock end, we go up to a hump about here, drops down a little. There's another quite a large hump in this area, then it drops down and drops right off as we get towards the headstock, which is due to this big casting defect in here. So there's basically one, two, three significant casting defects. Uh, this one in the headstock area being, yeah, the worst of them. When bluing this, we're going to expect to see some points in this area and some points through here. And basically we see almost nothing. The wee bit of contact here, a wee bit of contact there. I need to grind away this burr here so they can, we can get the straight edge on there better. But yeah, more work to do. This first roughing pass is really just to give it a bit of texture so that the ink uh, prints better. Otherwise, when you first first start, you, you really don't get much to to go off. I think I've got a problem over this part under the headstock where it looks like this part's thicker than the rest of the than the rest of the bed. But we'll do a couple of rounds of scraping and see what comes out. So now you can see we're really starting to get quite close. We've got reasonable distribution of points most of the way along. There's a bit of a hole here, maybe a little light through here, but basically in a, in a hole just in this spot. But a little more scraping and we should be done. I've been having some difficulty printing the uh, printing this this surface. I mean, using a triangular straight edge is really not ideal for this kind of work. Yesterday I was visited by one of my friends, David, uh, who goes under the name of Keilwinkel in the German Tischbahnungsbude forum. Now David is a true master of scraping. The, the work he's done has just been absolutely brilliant. And what he pointed out to me was that it would be easier to get a, a decent print along the surface if I put a stack of uh, gauge blocks on the surface plate of exactly the same thickness as I'm trying to measure to give me a nice even um, level to work from. So let's go ahead and measure this, measure these thickness. I'll build up some gauge blocks and then we can try touching off using a, a, bit, a much better supported uh, straight edge. Yeah, my gauge block set's uh, a bit of an eBay special. Um, they're all pretty old. They've all had, had a fair bit of wear but um, they do the job I guess. So let's have a look. We've got a an 8 plus an 104 well that definitely definitely makes finding the angle much easier um, it's probably going to give me a much more accurate print as well I'd say so yeah, continue with scraping. So looking at now that I've got a, a more stable um, print, we can see we've got a bit of a hole here in the middle, in this area. Uh, we've also got a bit of a hole through here. 
this area is light again around the, uh, the back edge there. In fact, being light along the back edge seems quite quite a general issue. So now comes the hard part, and that's trying to scrape for points. Because we did measure that we're, we're within about 4 microns over the length, so now it's really just trying to get into the, trying to increase the, the bearing surface and trying to scrape for more points. Just having a look to see whether it actually works better to use the, the Coborn uh, on this last bit of scraping. I've turned, I've, I've reduced the, the stroke down to about three millimeters. So let's see if we can dive bomb these, uh, dive bomb these spots better with the Coborn than with the hand scraper. So now to measure the thickness of the bed, I'm using a gauge block to sort of bridge the valleys and, and mountains of scraping. And this, is, this gauge is a 10,000th inch reading gauge, so it gives a nice accurate reading. As I cruise across here, looks like the maximum deviations I'm seeing are only in the range of one, maximum maybe two, oh, ten thousandth of an inch. Somewhere in the range of two to five microns deviation maximum. I was hoping to get the bed finished, but there's one more way to go, so I'll finish this today and Thanks for watching and see you next time.